This clip is to show you how to play the chanter. Notice I've taken the chanter out of the bag. I have what's called an interchangeable stock which protects my reed. If you haven't got one of these, you don't really want to be taking your chanter out of the bag because the reed can get damaged. We play the Northumbrian small pipes with the tips of our fingers. Highland pipes are played with the flat of the finger. We play with the tip. In essence, you're essentially doing that with your fingers and thumb. The thumb goes over the hole at the back, which we call G. Well, in actual fact, it's probably going to be slightly sharp of F. And the first three fingers of the left hand go over the first three holes. The little finger is there to play these keys, but you won't be playing any keys until you've mastered the art of playing the chanter just with the finger holes. The, the right thumb goes in the back of the chanter and the four fingers of the right hand go over the holes. Now how you hold the chanter depends a lot on the length of your arms and the length of your fingers. It's important that when you're sitting or standing you have good posture. Your shoulders should be level, back should be straight, your feet should be flat on the floor and your knees and feet should be roughly shoulder width apart. Some people prefer to hold the chanter like this, others prefer to hold the chanter like this. I've found that the people who prefer to hold like this are people whose fingers are all quite the same length. If your fingers are different in length, you may find it easier to hold the chanter like this. It makes reaching for the keys with the little finger a little bit easier. And playing the chanter is a simple matter of lifting a finger off and putting it back. You don't lift everything off like you do with a recorder. You always put the note back. The chanter has a stopped end. That's one of the features of the Northumbrian small pipes. We can play silence. Other bagpipes, when they have an open chanter, when they've got all the fingers on the holes, they get a note out of the bottom. And so when they're between notes, it reverts down to the bottom note. To get staccato playing, they have to do all sorts of fancy trilling. We don't need to do that. We can lift a finger off, play the note, and put it back. What's important to the beginner is to try and stifle leaks. You will inevitably get a lot of leaks and squeaks as the air escapes past your fingers. And most people make the mistake of trying to grip the chanter harder in order to eliminate this. Don't do that. You'll just end up with stiff fingers. It's often called the death grip. If you hold the chanter in a relaxed manner, hold it without any air going through it, and in your mind's eye, feel the actual holes with your fingertips. And that will give you an idea of where the holes are. And if you do that with your eyes closed, it will give you a much better feel for the chanter when you actually start to play it. When you do start to play, it's important that the notes pop out of the chanter, often said to be like peas from a pod. And this is achieved by lifting the finger cleanly or thumb, cleanly off away from the chanter and putting it back cleanly. If you imagine, if it comes off, if your finger comes off slowly, it will come away from the edge of the hole like that and you will get a beginning to the note. And the same with the end, you'll get a oh note. What you want is a clean bah! as the finger comes off the hole and you get that lovely staccato sound that the Northumbrian pipes is famous for. So, I'm going to demonstrate. When you're first learning the chanter, 
it is important that you've learned how to play the drones. Some people say you can learn the chanter first without learning the drones. That's perfectly possible. That's the way the Highland Pipers do it and the way many Northumbrian Pipers do do it. My advice is that because the chanter can waver so much more than the drones, if you start to play the chanter without having learned to maintain a steady pressure, then you may find it's difficult when you then start to play the drones. So, put the pipes on. I have no drones on. I twist my chanter so it's going to fit under my fingers and I never let go of the chanter. I introduce air into the bag and I've sealed my chanter and I just play. That's what you want to do when you first start playing, just play scales. Don't try, start to try and play tunes until you've got some mastery for the feel of the chanter itself. It's boring, but it's necessary. So when you've got the hang of that, then you might feel you can start to play tunes. When you do, don't use any of the keys. Until you've got your fingers used to the idea of sitting on those holes, if you start to play any of the keys, you will almost certainly, as you lift your thumb off, you will move your fingers away from the holes and you will get leaks. This is particularly true if you try and use the little finger. The moment people start to use the little finger to play the bottom E key, they almost invariably dislodge the D and get a terrible squeaky whistle. So it's really important when you're learning to play the chanter that you restrict yourself to the holes that your fingers and thumb cover. There's a fabulous repertoire of ancient tunes in the tune books that only use the holes on the chanter. So it won't restrict your learning and it will help your technique immensely.